Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, June 18th, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 2021. 3.8 rattles Indiana. And we have potential, potential tropical cyclone three making landfall today. But the big story, Minnesota huge chunks batter southeastern communities. Brush fire risk intensifies. Keep calm. It's boom time. Tennis ball size hail reported as storm passes through southern Minnesota. Say it ain't soda, but it is. Strong storms push through parts of southern Minnesota. We're bringing some large hail with them Thursday evening. In Lonsdale, Minnesota and nearby Webster, Fox 9 received several reports and photos of hail ranging in size from tennis ball to golf ball. And there are some mambos right there. Make sure you put your helmet on. No thanks. Severe weather risk today in Ohio, specifically Cleveland, as flooding rain, hail, damaging winds, and isolated tornadoes are possible. Now, tropical storm conditions expected to begin later today in New Orleans along the Gulf Coast. Tropical storm warnings have been issued, and we'll get to that. And this is all for Tropical Cyclone 3. And there they are, the pop, the potential, potential whew, Tropical Cyclone threat, 7 a.m., and let's just bring it out here. That is the path. It's going to kind of, the center of circulation will hook around New Orleans and head towards Atlanta. So the heaviest rain there is going to be east of New Orleans. Maybe Panama City will get hit. So hunker down. We have three weather areas of concern today. Potential, potential tropical cyclone three will gradually approach the northern Gulf Coast with heavy rain and potential flooding. Meanwhile, a sharp cold front will produce severe thunderstorms with significant winds, hail, tornadoes, and possible flooding across the Ohio Valley. So heads up there. Finally, a large dome of high pressure will continue and the major heat wave over the west extending into the central plains with fire warnings. So heads up there. And let's go over to Windy and run through the scenario here with Tropical Cyclone 3. And here we are in about an hour's time from the recording of this. So right now, during the video, the major winds are making landfall in New Orleans right now. And those will be gusting in the 40 mile per hour range. Nothing significant here as far as the winds are concerned. It is going to be the total precipitated moisture that really packs a punch here. This is slow moving. Here we are midday Saturday. It's still hitting Mobile, Alabama, New Orleans, just moving inland midday Saturday. And so it looks like by Saturday evening, there's the heaviest rain and winds, Montgomery, Alabama. And this baby's going to slowly make its way towards Atlanta. It's not going to get there till Saturday night, Sunday morning. So all weekend, the Southeast is going to have to deal with this. Massive flooding potential and winds moving through Georgia there on Sunday. Not so much a fun day. Now, let's jump over to the shocking numbers behind Lake Mead drought. And I know this has been all over the news for weeks. We've reported on it. The lake is down 143 feet in 26 years. But if you do a little research, the shocking numbers aren't shocking at all. And they're claiming that climate change is causing all this. But even without climate change here in the blue, we would have a problem because they have been taking more water out of the river than the river could provide. So it has nothing to do with climate. It has to do with greedy humans sucking the Colorado River dry and subsequently Lake Mead. John Fleck, the director of water resources program at the University of New Mexico, told the truth. He then added, but climate change has made it much worse. No, it hasn't, John. If you're already taking more water than the river has, then you made it worse, and climate change had nothing to do with it, you idiot. Another thing, they're saying that Lake Mead is going to dry up. Well, it took 26 years for it to drop 143 feet below a high, and it still has 175 feet to go before the power plant stops working. So, I'm sure it will rain before then. And if we all come together and we start, start, start taking less water than the river could provide, well, then it will recover. Isn't that simple? It has nothing to do with climate change. Now over to the quake over in James Crouch's neighborhood. Go check out James Crouch's B live stream. M3.8 
Bloomingdale, Indiana. That's a rarity. It shook houses and rattled nerves. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Etna, Fuego, Caraminch, Reventador, Sangue, Nevados de Chilan, Sabancaya, Suanosima, and others all puffing and passing to normal levels. But over here at Iceland, we're looking at the harmonic tremor since June 2nd through the 12th. And you could see that this volcano and this eruption is not going anywhere soon. In fact, there has been an uptick since the 10th of June in harmonic tremor on Iceland at the Fagrarusval eruption. So, as predicted, this baby's not stopping anytime soon. Now, one of the largest diamonds has been unearthed in Botswana. In fact, the third largest in the world. And it's gem quality. And someone's getting rich while others are getting poor. That's the mantra. Ozone pollution has increased in Antarctica. Now, this isn't ozone up high in the air, making an ozone hole. This is ozone down on the surface. Ozone happens naturally on Earth due to ionizing factors, pollution, and many other things. But the ozone pollution has increased in Antarctica, and you're supposed to be very worried until you, if, unless you read the article. Now, what the researchers found is that ozone at ground level had risen 0.14 part per billion. Let me repeat that. Ozone at ground level had risen 0.14 part per billion per year over the 26 years that were reviewed. Now, I don't know if you understand these terms, but one-tenth of a part per billion is parts per trillion. And somehow I don't think that will affect anything or anyone ever in Antarctica. Shartical. And here is the Shartical paper associated with it, the increasing surface ozone and tropospheric ozone in Antarctica and their possible drivers. It might be climate, it might be you, but possibly the numbers are so small that it might not be anything. Possibly. Some weird gas balls are swirling around the center of our galaxy. Yes, the Milky Way, Sagittarius A, is at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Once thought to be a star, then thought to be a black hole, then a massive black hole, is now being posited as a super massive lump of dark matter. And if you want to know more about the fairy tale, I put up a video about it just about 12 hours ago, hinting at dark matter, nature of Sagittarius A via the S stars. And here's the paper in all its glory, six pages for you to peruse with graphs. Wow. Now, the give and take of mega flares from stars. This is an interesting piece coming from physics.org. It is alluding to the fact that our star may flare. And we already know this. The, 19, or the 1859 Carrington event was a super flare, be a large X flare coming from the sun. But we're talking about thousand times that as a potential for happening regularly on stars and this uh, article basically lays that out there is it a soft disclosure of what might be coming nobody's bumming we already know overlapping magnetic activity cycles and the sunspot number forecasting sunspot cycle 25 amplitude this is the paper uh, that is getting any everyone's panties in a bunch over the terminator event which has nothing to do um with a, super, uh, a micronova or a supernova. It has everything to do with magnetic fields flipping at the pinch point here and the beginning of the next cycle. And what this can, according to the team, what it, it can do is it can predict the amplitude of the next cycle. And according to their maths, and if I can find it here, here is the current idea of the majority, let's say 99% of all solar scientists put cycle 25 below 24 right here at the green dot. And according to this team, they're putting it up the amplitude of solar cycle 25 up at the purple dot, which will be higher than any cycle since 1840. Huh. And right after that was the Carrington event. Hmm, interesting. The first case of post-mortem study in a patient vaccinated against the sars wu flu. This paper, well, it's the first of its kind. And if you're interested in the science of what's happening with the pandemic, read the article. New species of giant rhino, the largest land mammal that ever lived, offers clues to a long-running mystery. I had no idea there was a long-running mystery, but apparently there is. They want to know where they came from. Well, 
I bet you they came from earth. My final answer. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where science is fiction. Facts, well, they're censored. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people that share these videos. You're all heroes. And we'll see you next time. Be safe. Nin, 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 nin.